Motherboard's in place. I've already begun to install my 240 millimeter radiator uh, with my dual 120 silent fans and fan grills. Um, the Zion 970 Predator case I chose lets me do the top mount, which I I like that a little bit better. Uh, the fans will be blowing air into the case um, for better cooling, and I did run the wires for the fans through the back side of the case, which will be covered up and hooked up to my fan controller um, at a later time. You'll see that I did place my pump and a mock piece of tubing just to gauge how the length of my tubing will be and the angles of my tubing so they won't kink. Okay, now I'm going to start up hooking up my tubing. Um, you'll see I'm going to use a little bit of my Fessorview ultraviolet dye, um, just smearing some on my finger and then um, putting it on the inside of the tubing. Um, reason being that I found it kind of hard to get the 7 16th inside diameter tubing over the half inch diameter bars and this just made it slip on nice and easy. Um, I do not think um, that I think it would be nearly impossible for that tubing to come off even with using that little bit of liquid sort of as lubrication. Um, I did have to remove some tubings and I had to actually cut off the tubing around the barb. It was just that hard to get off so I wasn't worried about any leaks. So I placed my pump um, loosely because I, I still have to fill it so I didn't bolt it in but everything else is mounted in place. And the way I'm going to run my water loop will be from my reservoir to my pump to my radiator into my cooling um, CPU cooling water block out of the water block and back to the reservoir. Um, that's just the way I felt like doing it. I feel I can get a little bit better temperatures if I run the radiator right to the CPU block. You want to make sure that you don't you have proper lengths of tubing but you want to use the least amount of tubing as possible and you want to do so making sure that the tubings do not kink which will impede the flow of your water loop and um, essentially won't get as good cooling and you'll put more strain on your pump. So now the fun part, um, I'm going to begin to fill my water loop in my reservoir with a um, Fesser Ultra Pure by Distilled um, Pure Water and I'm using a um, like a piston syringe you can get from any pet store um, to fill it. Um, I eventually took the plunger out of the piston syringe and just used it sort of as a funnel um, being careful not to spill anything even though the water is supposed to be non-conductive um, water and electronics to me don't mix so I just didn't want to risk it so I was just very careful um, and I found that my um, my system held about 750 milliliters of water. Alright, so everything's installed. I started uh, to cycle the pump. Um, I didn't get to show purging the air. Um, basically, I turned my system on. Um, when it started chugging, I started hearing bubbles. I turned it off, let it rest, turn it back on about six or seven times um, to get most of the air out of my system. I even had to rock my system back and forth um, just to make sure that the air um, was escaped out of all components and I let it run checking for any um, leaks um, you can see the front of my system my reservoir pump is not secured yet because um, I still have to add some ultraviolet dye wanted to make sure I gave you guys a look at my wire management this probably took the most um, time to do and quite a few zip ties as you can see um, but everything's nice and hidden um, and secured All right, now it's time to get ready to um, add my Fesser View Ultraviolet Green dye. You can see what it looks like before and while under um, black lights. I have two 12-inch cold cathode black lights installed in my system to give it that ultraviolet effect. And to install the dye, um, I backloaded it about 22 milliliters of the ultraviolet green dye into my piston syringe, so I don't spill any. Make sure I get an accurate amount. And to me, this was the coolest part of the install. This is where the water cooling actually comes alive. Um, I'm going to slowly, while the pump is running, um, inject the UV green dye into the system. And you'll see it um, start to kind of glow under the black lights. It looks really cool. Um, and let it cycle for a little bit to get the ultraviolet dye spread throughout the system. Um, you can see the Fesser View ultraviolet green dye really stands out under my two 12-inch cold cathode black lights. Um, really cool. One of the funnest parts of this install for me.
I didn't show it, but I um, after doing this, I did install my dead water drops in my corrosion blocker. Once the tubing was all connected, um, I started installing my uh, ultraviolet blue anti kink coils um, from FrozenCPU.com. Uh, these are pretty cool. They not only keep your hose from kinking, um, but they also provide like a nice contrast uh, between the UV green and the UV blue of the coils. I think it gives a nice little look to it. Try to make them space pretty evenly. Give them a good look. And that install probably took me about 25-30 minutes to get them right. What I'm going to show you now is some numbers before the XSPC upgrade. Um, these are numbers with the uh, Aztec 510 liquid low cost liquid cooling system under 100% prime 95 load all eight threads are 100% you can see the temperatures there for two sample cores are anywhere between 70 and 71 I've seen them spike to 74 so I'm not really comfortable with that for everyday use this system is overclocked from a base 3.07 gigahertz to 3.83 gigahertz Alright, let's have a look at some of the temperatures now. I'm still at 3.8 gigahertz, uh, still under 100% load, Pro 95 is running. You see all eight threads are 100%. And core temperatures are now sitting sort of idle around 62. I'm pretty happy with that considering the cost of the XSPC liquid cooling CPU kit. Um, my temperatures, I believe, before were. 71 to 74 um, so a 10 11 degrees Celsius drop is significant considering the cost of this kit I would highly recommend it if you're thinking about getting it go for it it's cool um, my voltages are really low well under spec sitting at 3.8 gigahertz 23 uh, multiplier 166 front side bus So yeah, thumbs up. I'm very happy. Um, I plan to upgrade this system probably to at least 4.2 to see what kind of uh, quality chip I have. And then I'll probably back it down a little bit for everyday use. Um, I don't want to burn anything out, obviously. Um, but I'm going to push it a little bit. And with this kit, I feel that I should be able to do so. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And uh, go check this kit out. Two thumbs up. Later.